Well, hello, I'm so glad you're here. We're going to continue our study of Genesis 37 because we're going to talk about the conspiracy to stop the fulfillment of Bible prophecy in your life. That conspiracy that was engaged against Jesus, against Joseph, and against all the prophets, it's raging on, you guys, and we need to pay attention. There is so much here. The Holy Spirit has been uncovering treasures for us. So as you remember, Genesis chapter 37, Jacob the father gave his son Joseph a multicolored coat. That tunic represented the jeweled bride and is the rainbow around the throne in Revelation chapter 4. Well then, right after that, it's recorded in Scripture that Joseph has a dream and it was of his brothers bowing down and worshiping him and if you were well remember right they did not like that they said are you actually going to reign over us are you going to rule over us well we know that that dream its fulfillment is found in revelation chapter 7 9 and that is after the bride is raptured up believing israel will be grafted into the church they are raptured at mid-trib, the bride goes up pre-trib, church goes up mid-trib, and that is when that dream is fulfilled. And there will be the Revelation 7, 9 multitudes bowing down and worshiping Jesus. And that will be a group that it says no one can count from every nation. So that includes Israel. Uh, it means every tribe. Oh, that includes Israel. Every people and every language. Now, the reason why it's so important to take notice of no one could count is because the church is a militarized government. And if you will remember, King David got in trouble for numbering his armies. The army of Israel was never supposed to be numbered. And so this is why we know this is the church, because it is a militarized government. That will be the group that throws the dragon and the remaining two-thirds of his angels out of heaven onto earth. That's when the second half of the tribulation begins. Okay, now, Genesis thirty-seven thirteen. Here's where we're going to start talking about and get this conspiracy of the ten brothers set up. And it starts out with Genesis 37, 13. It says, Israel said to Joseph, and I find it interesting, the scripture does not say Jacob said to Joseph, but Israel says to Joseph, are not your brothers pastoring the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send you to them. And he said, I will go. Now, we have to consider here that Joseph felt that antagonism from his ten brothers towards him. I'm not sure if he really relished the idea of heading off to be with his brothers, but he was willing, he goes. And what we notice here is the father said the ten sons, Joseph's brothers, are in Shechem. That's where the, they're supposed to be, right? That's what we see here. Well, we notice in verse 17, the brothers were not in Shechem, where they were supposed to be, where the father wanted them to be. They had moved their father's flocks to Dothan. Well, Dothan means two wells. And we learn in verse 24 that at least one of them was dry. Well, what is interesting is Shechem is the New Testament city of Sychar. Yes, what do we know about Sychar? John chapter 4, the woman at the well. She was at Jacob's well. That is the Old Testament town of Shechem. So we see that in Shechem, there was plenty of pasturing places. There was plenty of water. They get to Dothan, and we see that at least one of the wells was dry, which implies there's not much water there. So we have to ask why Jacob's 10 sons moved the father's flocks off of his pasture land in Shechem where there was plenty of water and Jacob's well was there and moves them to Dothan and there's not much water there. Well, we get from the text that, oh, Dothan was on a trading route. Huh, 
Very interesting. Why would Jacob's ten sons move their father's flocks from the land of plenty over to where it was dry, but on a trading route? What were these brothers up to? Were they making secret trades? secret deals, maybe political deals, maybe networking, maybe trading for goods, um, personal goods, personal connections uh, to grow their viewer base, to grow their ministries. Hmm. Were they trading their father's lambs for these things? Wow. Now we're going to get into this conspiracy because while the brothers are in Dothan, they see young Joseph walking towards them. What was the tip off? Probably that coat of many colors wasn't just a plain white or tan garment. They see their brother Joseph coming towards them from a long ways off and they begin to conspire and they plan premeditated murder. Now, if it weren't for a couple of interesting events, they would have followed through with that. And what they ended up doing, as you know, is they, they traded their brother. They sold him as a slave, as a servant to these foreigners. And that's how Joseph ended up in Egypt. And that's a very familiar record to us. Well, it's interesting here is they stripped him before selling him they stripped him of his multicolored tunic. So understand that there is a conspiracy against you. You are the bride of Christ. You are the jeweled bride. You are the rainbow around the throne, Revelation 4.3. The sons of Jacob, Jacob and his sons, they understand Bible prophecy. They know Bible prophecy better than the church does. We Gentiles don't know it as well as we think we do. They have been schnookering us. This conspiracy has continued to go on. All they had to do was just insert a few traditions early on, and well-meaning Christian leaders over the ages pick up on those traditions, solidify them. Once you see a tradition, it's very difficult to see the passage any other way. Jesus called these traditions stumbling blocks and snares. And so this is why it's so important to be studying the prophetic layer of scripture and just rethinking some of these things that we mainstream evangelicals have been taught. So they strip him of his multicolored tunic. So that's you. (laughs) You who are interested in Bible study and learning. You're seeking the scriptures because you want to understand the truth. Many of you are still in brick and mortar churches, and, and that is wonderful. No problem with that. Some of you don't have a Bible teaching church to attend. So you've come online and there's a lot of teaching online. And we're going to learn a little bit about that in just a a moment here. But moving on, then verse 25, they've thrown him into the pit. They sit down to eat a meal. And all of this passage, it just speaks of the foreshadowing of Passover, the Passover feast when God is going to bring the Jews out of their slavery in Egypt. So this is a foreshadowing of that. And it's telling us once again, there's going to be a lamb slain for that. Well, they sell him to the caravan going to Egypt. Then verse 31, they slaughter a male goat, take the robe, dip it in the blood of that male goat. So his robe is dipped in blood. Robin posted the most beautiful comment under that last video. I want you guys to go read that. It was just so beautiful. I mean, it just gave me chills what she had connected. And I want to tell you again the importance of once you see the three raptures, bride goes up pre-trib, church goes up mid-trib, remnant goes sideways, remain in mortal bodies, they go into the Father's barn, they become the seed that repopulates the earth during Christ's millennial reign. Once you see that pattern, which is repeated throughout the scriptures, you too can be making these incredible connections and thinking of things that our team here hasn't even thought, because there's so many connections, but you guys, so many are just 
taking these teaching, teachings and running with them, and we love what the Holy Spirit is revealing to you. So thank you for sharing. Okay, so they take Joseph's multicolored tunic, dip in blood, they take it to Jacob. What does Jacob say? Verse 33, Jacob said, it is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him. Right there, Jacob identifies who the wild beast is. The scriptures tell us who the wild beast is. It's the ten sons of Jacob. Now, Angeline pointed out, the ten sons had even incriminated themselves. Go back up and look at verse 20. They even called themselves the wild beast. Let me read that verse. New American Standard Bible. Now then, come and let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits, and we will say, a wild beast devoured him. Then we'll see what will become of his dreams. So you see, they were trying to stop Bible prophecy from happening so that Joseph would not rule and reign over them. Well, it is still the case. There are still people that do not want the bride to rule and reign over them. See, they thought they did a better job when they crucified our Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't just sell him off to another nation. They didn't just sell him as a slave. No, they made sure they didn't mess up. And so they, 2,000 years ago, Jacob, the ten sons, crucified our Lord. And they thought they stopped Bible prophecy over him, that he would now not rule and reign over, there, over them. But Jacob believed, their father believed in resurrection. Jesus, as you know, was resurrected, praise God. And so now, the ten sons, they don't want you to rule with Christ as that multicolored tunic. So there is a war raging against you, and this conspiracy continues against you. And in a moment, I'm going to show you, I'm gonna, practically speaking, one of the ways this is being carried out. Okay, so right here, we have two witnesses. We have the wild beast himself incriminating himself in verse 20, and we have Jacob proclaiming who the wild beast is. Wow, that is powerful. Okay, so now it's so important to understand what Scripture has just revealed to us here and to know that there is still an effort to stop you from getting a reward because we know salvation is free. Salvation in Jesus Christ is the free gift of God. You cannot do anything to earn it. Okay, but now rewards are earned and the rapture is a reward. There's the rapture of the bride and the rapture of the church. God the Father is inviting the entire church to be the bride, but so few are dedicated. They're just not interested in the word and the father is not going to pick a bride for his son if they're not that interested in the word i wouldn't if i had one son and i'm picking a bride for my son i'm not going to pick somebody that doesn't care what he says doesn't pay attention to him goes off and does her own thing all right you get the picture so, it is the wild beast who has been injecting erroneous Bible prophecy interpretations into the church so that the church is so confused and divided that most pastors, understandably, don't want to even talk about Bible prophecy from the pulpit. It is the wild beast that does not want the church to know that the bride is the rainbow around the throne, the multicolored coat that King Messiah, King Jesus is wearing. The wild beast does not want you to know that the testimony of Jesus 
is the spirit of prophecy. See, because these 10 sons of Jacob, they know the meanings of Bible prophecy. They are not stupid. They've had centuries and centuries to study Bible prophecy and the language, and no doubt they have typed in the Bible into their AI fancy schmancy program and are getting a lot of it. The wild beast does not want you to know that you are that rainbow around the head of the Revelation 10, 1 strong angel, which is the spirit of prophecy. You know, this is why, you know, in one of our videos a while back, I said, be praying that God pours out on you the spirit of prophecy as you're reading the scriptures. Okay, now, the wild beast does not want even one bride to be raptured up pre-trib because they know, in part, the power and the ministry and the authority that every saint who is a pre-trib raptured bride, they know in part what her ministry is going to be during the seven-year tribulation. The church doesn't know this. They're not studying Bible prophecy. We don't all have to know it all, but we need to be humbly seeking and be teachable and be wanting to shake off these traditions that have been injected into the church by the wild beast over the centuries. Okay, now I want to go to um, something that is really astounding, and it shows you the lengths that the wild beast is going to, even to this day, we discovered something that was incredible. Okay, I'm gonna show you a slide here. What is that? That is Mount Rushmore. We know that's Mount Rushmore. Incidentally, in scripture, mountains are governments. Okay, now I'm gonna show you another slide, but I'm not gonna keep it up for very long. I would get a copyright strike, but just to make sure, I'm not gonna keep that slide up for very long. Now look at Mount Rushmore. Uh, Is that Abe Lincoln or is that somebody else? Who do you, who do you think that is? Okay, I'm gonna remove that. Now let me tell you where I got that second slide. I was watching a Christian YouTube channel And typically, if it's just a person speaking, I'm not even looking at my screen. I'm multitasking. I might be folding clothes or sweeping the floor or unloading the dishwasher. But for some reason, I was looking at the speaker. And in a split second, that slide passed through the screen. And I thought, what was that? I mean, instantly it registered, that was Mount Rushmore, but that was not Abe Lincoln. And so it took me about 30 minutes to find that slide because it went through, I don't even think, half a second. And you know, when you're editing these videos, you can get right down to a a tenth of a second in removing something or adding something. And this is subliminal um, programming. Now, The cat's been out of the bag that theaters have been doing this for decades. During intermission, they're slipping these slides in of buttered popcorn and soda pop. And because it puts the suggestion into the viewer's mind, their spirit, to, oh, I'm thirsty. Oh, I'm hungry. Oh, I think I have a hankering for popcorn. Okay, that is the power of visuals. So here's a Christian channel slipped that thing in there so fast, and I know it was just the Holy Spirit that caused me to catch that, and then trying to find that split second slide so I could screenshot it and show it to you is just, it, it's the Lord. But thousands of people, it's a huge channel. Some of you are watching that channel. I'm not going to mention the name of the channel because it's not even necessary, because many are doing it. So what has happened? It was the 10 sons of Jacob that decades ago started putting the church to sleep. And they worked very hard at keeping the church asleep. And they've done this to our seminaries as well. I'm not going to go into the details how they've done that. Well, when they put the church to sleep, 
they knew some are going to want more. They're going to, some of the people sitting in the pews, they're going to want the word. They're not going to want, you know, how to have your best life now. And they're, they're going to get tired of that prosperity message and they're going to leave, but they're still going to be looking for Bible teachers. So here's what they did. They start all these YouTube channels so that as people are gradually leaving the sleepy church, here's one of the 10 sons of Jacob, already set up, giving them different type of messages, just enough to make them think they're awake, enough to make them think they're learning the Bible, enough uh, for them to think that, oh, you're the church going up pre-trib, just say the prayer and you're in, okay? We have to understand that there is a conspiracy to keep you from going up in that pre-trib rapture and ruling and reigning with Jesus Christ over the nations. Now, in this conspiracy, the ten sons of Jacob have led the father's flocks to a place where there's no water. They're trading them for personal gain. I want you to be able to prayerfully study this chapter out more on your own before I share more through another video. All right. Thank you so much. Oh, if you received any benefit whatsoever from this video, please give it a like. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.